Welcome to the Be Your Soul podcast, a semi-monthly podcast about energy, self-growth, and the soul. I'm your host, Sky Bradshaw. Each episode, we will have three segments to support the energy of your authentic self. The unclouded heart, opening space for spirit and the universe to bring nuggets of wisdom rooted in the current episode's topic. Skylights, exciting, knowledgeable, and helpful guest interviews. And that's what Sky says full of exercises, tools, and guidance on how to do the work. Today's topic is self-love, and our guest will be Azalea Yao Edwards of Emerge Skin and Soul. Be sure to stick with us all the way through to the end for the last segment for those helpful tips on self-love practice. Let's open up our heart center and our space to receive this episode as we find ourselves tuning into our bodies and feeling our breath move in through our nose and out through our mouth. So we allow our body to relax, 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 relax. Relax, 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 relax. Relax, 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 relax. And as we tune into this space of complete relaxation, We open up our energies to the ancestors, loved ones, and friends to come together today to heal and guide us and lift us to the highest version of ourselves so we may hear what we need to hear, know what we need to know, connect how we need to connect, and be what we need to be for our highest and best good and the highest and best good of all involved as we open up our heart center. Today, we're going to tune into self-care and self-love and what that really means to us. Often when we hear the term self-care, we're resistant. We think that that means that we're being selfish or that we're taking time, energy, space from someone else to care for ourselves. We're told throughout our lives that if there's one piece of cake We're meant to sacrifice it to the person in front of us instead of leaning into the concept that we can get a knife and both people can have their needs met. As we think about that idea of self-care and all the stigma that surrounds it, the idea of sacrifice being valor, that taking care of ourselves is selfishness. The challenge with this idea is not receiving and only giving is actively engaging in imbalance. Imagine only filling your tank with gas or only driving your car. If we only fill our tank, then we either fill it once and are stagnant where we are or spill gas out onto the ground wasting effort. If we only drive, then we eventually run out of gas and find ourselves stuck in depletion. A healthy balance is filling and driving, which creates an infinite cycle of giving and receiving. When we think of how valid self-care is, it is that filling our own tanks, bringing to us what we need so we can move forward to help others. We have the energy to be able to connect to community and family and the things that use us for resources. And so really thinking about how important the idea of taking in so we can give out is, it creates a balance and a balanced focus that allows us to become infinite. We become bigger. The more we receive and the more we can give, the cycle of infinite supply circles through us, allowing us to expand and allowing us to charge our batteries in a way that we don't move to depletion and have to go from this tiny, you know, vat of energy that we're trying to work with. Because if we're always filling and always giving that resource of energy, that container that we become becomes greater 
and greater and greater. It gives us the space to expand our energy and therefore our energy imprint. It allows us to be the example that we're trying to be to others because our loved ones, if they were depleting themselves for our benefit, we wouldn't like it. So why do we imagine that that's what we should do for them? We would want it to be a give and receive thorough expansion of all things because when the one is strengthened, the sum is strengthened. And that reinforces the balance in our energy field and recharges us so we can do that for those around us. So remember as you're tuning in to the idea of self-care, when that critic comes in your head or that societal belief that sacrifice is love, really recognize like the truth of this is if we elevate our energy, we not only sustain ourselves, but we can support others in greater ways as we multiply upon ourselves with that fuel. So I hope that you can tune in to your self-care, this being one of them, and allow yourself to feel full and whole in your energy through pulling in the sustenance and the resources that you need so you can give them back into the world. Production of the Be Your Soul podcast is made possible in part by Island of Salvation Botanica. A visit to the Island of Salvation Botanica will enlighten you in the rich blend of culture and spiritual traditions that is New Orleans. The shop carries Vodou religious supplies, medicinal herbs, works of art, and more. It's considered to be one of the most authentic Vodou shops in New Orleans by locals and visitors alike. Located in a project co-developed by Sally Ann Glassman, the New Orleans Healing Center on St. Claude Avenue is only steps away from the French Quarter. Welcome to Skylights. This is the part of the show where we bring in amazing guests and beautiful people. And today we have one of those with us, Azalea Yao Edwards. She's a skincare specialist, Reiki master, and owner of Emerge Skin and Soul, and also happens to be somebody who I love dearly and admire greatly. Her topic today is going to be self-care, and we're going to tune in with her at her focus on a skin to soul experience, which is what Emerge is. And I know because I've had that skin to soul experience with her, which is beautiful. <laughs> so Azalea, when you think of self-care, what's the first thing that comes to mind to you? So when I think about self-care, it is the idea of caring and loving yourself enough to give yourself what what you need maybe what you're what you're lacking to you know nurture yourself nurture your soul getting curious enough to connect with yourself and see what your needs are you know are your needs from season to season more mental or physical or spiritual or emotional and just getting curious enough to get to know yourself, to get still enough and quiet enough to become aware of what your needs are and aware that the idea of self-care is that, you know, only you can give that care um, to yourself. So what is it in the moment that you can do uh, for yourself to nurture yourself and nurture your soul? Sometimes I tell people to be their own best friend. And so like when you're working on self-care, like how do you turn to yourself as you would your friend or your loved one and give yourself those things that you would offer to them, those, that attention, that time, that connection, the attentiveness, like how do we turn the compassion and love and support that we give to others on ourselves and, and give it to us in that space of self-care? Absolutely. And that's so hard for so, so many of us to do is to shift that self-criticism, the self-loathing and turn, you know, shift that to self-love and self-care. And it really is a challenge for, for a lot of people, even, even myself, um, yeah. you know, owning <laughs> <Myself> a, <too. laughs> right. You know, here I am, I own a holistic spiritual day spa and I'm a self-care pusher, you know, I, I hold a beautiful 
container, a beautiful space for people to connect deeper with themselves and with their own self-care. But even I, you know, can get can get lost in the day-to-day busyness and and of owning a business, being a mom, you know, all these things and can find myself lacking in self-care as well. As a matter of fact, I was a little hesitant to do this podcast today because my own self-care has really uh, been lacking lately. And at first I was just like, man, do I, is this something I need to do? You know, like, am I in the right space to even be talking about self-care? But I realized, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful way for me to share that, you know, I too struggle with self-care, but I'm here today to to tell you, to tell your listeners, um, you know, you can recommit to that self-care to yourself, to loving yourself, just like anything else at any time. So happy to be here and, and share my experience with self-care. Well, we are so grateful and happy to have you. And one of the things that I think can happen in that space of self-care is like, tuning into that woulda, coulda, shoulda, or that self-shame where we like, you know, as literally you were just saying, like, I should know better, I should be doing better, instead of just embracing where we are in that moment, you know, and recognizing it is through sometimes the stumble that allows us to rise even greater the next moment, or maybe not, but to really give ourselves permission to realize like, as you know, Maya Angelou would say, like, I did the best I could with what I knew, and now I know better, I do better. And so that powerfulness and recognizing, like, we can have tools in the toolbox that we're ready to whip out for somebody else and hesitate and, and kind of pause when it comes to, you know, using those tools for ourselves. And I think that there's a, a myth or a misbelief that tells us, you know, if there's one piece of cake, you should give it to the person in front of you instead of saying, no, I'm going to get a knife. And guess what? We're both going to get that cake and that's okay. Absolutely. And, and allowing that to be our truth in that way. So what would one piece of advice that you would give to somebody who puts those needs to the side be? Hmm. Well, just, uh, just to get curious, you know, I would ask, you know, do you even know what your what your needs are? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe thinking about your own values. You know, I have been focused so much on my business, my values in business and focusing on business that that I have kind of let that get away from me and have been forgetting to focus and explore my own personal values and, you know, things that I value are, um, you know, personal relationships and nature. And those things, you know, have been suffering for me lately. So, you know, getting curious, looking to see, do I even know what my what my needs are? Mm -hmm. And then can you ask for help? Is it a need that you need to ask um, for someone's assistance with rather than just being like, oh, no one ever does anything for me? Mm -hmm. You know, instead, you know, it's like, can you maybe the self-care piece is learning to ask for help or to speak up for yourself. So understanding what your needs are, asking for help if you need it, but just really just tuning in and, and setting aside the time to do those things that you, you feel like you're lacking or you're craving or you're, you're not getting from others or from, from the external world and, you know, really figuring out how to give that to yourself. Absolutely. One of my dear friends told me once that sometimes receiving a gift is giving a gift to someone else. Mm -hmm. And when we think about accepting help or asking for our needs to be met, you know, in that self-care process, it also is a gift because, you know, when you tell someone that you love them enough to see what your needs are, that you care about them and yourself enough to ask for help, that, you know, that is where, you know, the base of this podcast is like, when the one is strengthened, the sum is strengthened. And we realize like, you know, we're not meant to do it alone, we are all connected in whatever way. And so by giving ourselves permission to know, you know, how to ask for what I would call appropriate help, or, you know, appropriate connection and support is, is allowing people to love you in the way that you need to feel loved. 
And so that can be a, a great gift, not only to ourselves, but to others. Absolutely. And then, you know, another another piece of that is like showing up for yourself. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, like I give facials and, and do these energetic services. So I'm doing the service and, and, and giving of myself in a way, but the person in need of the service, you know, has to show up for the se- themselves in the way that they have to request that service. They have to put the time aside for themselves, invest in themselves, and then physically, you know, show up for that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, asking for what we need, but also, you know, taking taking action for ourselves. Um, it doesn't always have to be doing something for ourselves. It can be someone else helping, you know, helping us in that self-care process. But but yeah, just kind of showing up for ourselves in that way. Yeah. The saying there is, uh, spirit says, meet me halfway and I will see you there. Yes. yes. And so we know we have to do our part to show up and have accountability and tune in, but we don't have to do it all. Like, mm-hmm. what is that appropriate amount of balance that allows for you know, connectivity, showing up, as well as receiving, because everything in nature is balanced, you know, any ecosystem has a balance. And, and if something's off in that, then it will, it will counterbalance, it will rebalance itself. But we usually wait to make those choices of rebalancing until we, you know, move into the have to spaces. And so by looking at like, well, how do I give and receive, not just give, how do I create that balance equilibrium in asking and answering? And I think that that's a, a powerful part of that self-care and self-love aspect. Mm-hmm. So what's one lesson other, you know, you, you gave us a, an example, but what was, what's one lesson that you learned the hard way when it came to mm-hmm. self-care? <laughs> Yeah, if so, you will, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't mind at all. And it's a lesson I'm still learning, but you know, it's it's certainly getting getting better for me, but you know, earlier on in my career, I, I would just, you know, work myself to death 5 days a week. I'd work 8, 9, 10 hour days, not take a lunch, barely take a break, and it was just, you know, always in in service and service and service, but it was also, you know, trying to make a little more money, you know, whatever it was, just working myself to death. And I would plan a vacation or have a break or a holiday planned. And I would find myself pushing myself that much harder to make up for that week or those few days that I was going to be gone and just really work myself to death. And then when I the time would come for this vacation or this break, I would work myself into a state of illness. And I I kid you not, every time I had a break, I would collapse with an illness mm. and would just, you know, it's like, then it's no vacation. It's, you know, there's no, you know, you're really just at that point, just, you know, uh, having to take care of yourself in a different way. And so, you know, that would happen quite frequently and happened on my honeymoon and you know just so many so many vacations and holidays where I just worked myself to death and so not taking the time taking the breaks not giving myself mental breaks or physical breaks and not saying no you know during those Mm -hmm. days it was like if someone wanted to get in and I couldn't get them in for six weeks I would be like, oh, how do I get them in? And I would fit them in. So I would always mm. squeeze people in, squeeze people in, squeeze people in. So part of that was not being able to, not being able to say no and, and not being able to take a break. And, um, you know, it's it was tough enough just, you know, having illness as a result of that. But, you know, I know that, you know, if I keep going like that, that illness will manifest when one day potentially in disease. And so um, I'm a lot better these days, but that was definitely my my big wake up call was recognizing that pattern of overwhelm and overworking myself into illness every single time. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, self-care is like gas in our car. You know, we can only go so far before we completely run out and have to walk with a can to the station to get get going again and if we really thought of it as that like you know fuel of the soul self-care is fuel of the soul it is what 
keeps us tuned in to that truth of self that allows us to be that big, beautiful version of ourselves. Whereas if we're hand to mouth with that energy, then we're always depleting, we're in scarcity, we're not realizing like self does not mean selfish. We deserve to, you know, have the same care and beauty that we are giving to others in a way that allows us to become bigger because when we feed our soul, when we tune in to that self-care and expand, then we will continue to expand. The more the work we get to do becomes bigger, the impact we have is larger, the energy imprint is more intense. And each time that we make those choices to fuel before we run out, we multiply and we multiply and we multiply. And it really creates that space of of existential growth in our service impact, in our ability to tune in. And so, you know, I'm, I'm always standing on the pedestal of, we all need self-care, like that soapbox I was saying, like, mm-hmm. how are you doing it yeah, for yourself that, in that and way? And that, that is my biggest challenge um, is, you know, remembering how to fill my my cup so that I can fill others. And, you know, being in a service industry um, and a lot of service providers are, are guilty of it, just running our, ourselves ragged. But then, mm-hmm. it, you know, when you reach the point of exhaustion, overwhelm and burnout, you're no good to the people that you're trying to service. Right. And I and I find that and I start recognizing that when I've gone too far, you know, whether I feel like the passion in my work isn't there or what it, whatever that is, just knowing that it's because I'm not I'm not slowing down and, and taking the time that I need for for myself and it's not serving not serving me as a business owner, as a service provider, as a mentor, as a mother, as a wife, like none of that. Everything suffers if I'm if I'm not taking the time for myself. Well, I I feel like I have seen a beautiful growth in you as far as not only awareness of it, but how you address it and you're vulnerable about it and you, you know, just put it out there with yourself, which I think is like very, very beautiful because everybody's doing it, whether they're talking about it or not. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, you know, it is, we live in a, a sacrifice instead of compromise kind of belief system. And so mm-hmm. the fact that you're not only brave enough to address it and, you know, have the courage to look straight at it, like you also are brave and have the courage to be vulnerable and and speak it into truth and say like, okay, this is where I am and this is not where I want to be, but this is where I am right now. Yeah. So that's brave. Thank you for that. Yeah. It's my, it's my medicine. You know, I believe that the trials and tribulations and the things that we go through become our medicine and become the things that we need to share with others. And that's why I am so passionate about self-care because I've, I've been in the burnout stage of, you know, I experienced burnout and overwhelm and all these things. And I, and I also know what it feels like to be in balance and to, Mm -hmm. you know, to be caring for myself. And so, you know, I'm, I'm learning right along with everyone else, but (laughs) I do believe it is, it is my medicine to share. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about holding space for other people to connect with their self-care needs. I love you for that. So when it comes to the term, be your soul, what does that mean to you? Hmm. I think about how children um, are such pure souls, right? They're not so far removed, maybe from that that soul, the universal experience. And so it's for me, it's just like getting getting curious and and being childlike again. So what are the things that like light me up and actually make me, feel feel like my I'm in my soul or my soul is happy and so you know as a as a child you know I loved to um, dance and sing and create art and be in nature and so for me when I am connecting to those things you know being in nature like connects me with my body and and I'm able to experience all the senses and all the elements. And that makes my soul happier than anything. So just connecting and being with nature. Singing, you know, I've, I've had a lifelong struggle with expressing, exp- expression, expressing myself 
So, you know, singing is my soul wants to sing and wants to mm-hmm. express itself. And, you know, same thing with, you know, dancing, being in my body, moving energy and another form of expression. And then creation, you know, I feel like we're, we're, we're here to create, create, create our lives the way we, you know, want them to be. So, you know, art, creation, you know, different things, your soul wants to, wants to create and be creative. So for me, being my soul means reconnecting with, with those things that, that I feel make my soul happy and, and make my soul shine through. So, yeah. So what's one thing that you do no matter what to get your self-care in? So this is one of those things that, you know, changes from season to season for me. And uh, as I mentioned before, I've not been great with self-care lately. That is shifting and I can share what I'm what I'm shifting later. But um, I would say that would be my morning beverage. Um, I create a my own little cacao and, and mushroom blend. And so it's partly just the the ritual of, you know, making my beverage. And then, you know, I don't take my, my morning coffee, my morning beverage and go sit down and start working. You know, that's that quiet me time. So even my daughter knows by the time I've made, you know, my husband's coffee and her breakfast, if there's anything else she wants or needs, she better speak up before I sit down with my hot beverage because that's my time. So whether it is... Um, setting intentions for the day or a little meditation or scrolling, um, you know, through social media for a few minutes with my hot beverage. That That is my me time. Snuggled up on the sofa in my robe with my hot beverage. It uh, never fails. That's, that's my me time first thing in the morning. I love that. And so when you feel centered and balanced in your life, like, what does that look like to you? What does that feel like? How does that come forward to be centered and balanced? Mm, for me personally, I guess just like I'm seeing like a pie chart of, you know, dis- different aspects of my life, whether it be like career, family, relationships, intimacy, fun, you know, these things like kind of taking a a look at that and seeing, you know, where there may be too much focus or not enough and uh, trying to give attention to where, you know, the pieces of the pie chart might be missing. So when I was getting ready for this podcast, I knew that I needed to practice some self-care today um, for myself, even though I had a thousand things to do you know, I had to get quiet and ask, you know, what, what does my soul need? What, what would help me be in a better headspace for this podcast? And I knew that I needed to get out in nature and um, just going and sitting in back, my backyard wasn't enough. So I haven't been hiking in a really long time. So I searched some um, hiking spots and found a trail that I had never been to and went and connected with nature and it was so beautiful you know just like five minutes into the walk I came to this spot on the lake and you know the water the sun was just glistening across the water and I stopped and leaned on a tree and closed my eyes and could just you know feel the sun beaming down on my eyelids and warming up my face and warming my heart and warming my belly and it just felt so good and with my eyes closed behind my eyelids, I could just see the energy of everything around me and Mm. I could just feel the support, you know, holding onto the tree was supporting me. You know, it was being supported by the the earth, the rocks, the the water. I could hear the breeze, you know, moving through the trees and, and feel the sun beating down on me. And I just felt so, so calm and balanced and and supported and that was just a, a big reminder for me that I am I am supported and and I can can find balance when I tune in and see what my soul needs what a beautiful way to be present with yourself That's it was really... it was and it just reminded me like and I was just so grateful I was grateful for you for asking me to be on this podcast to give me this reset that I even needed to (laughs) tune back in and be like, okay, Azalea, yes, you have a thousand things to do. Those thousand things to do are always going to be there. So take this time to step away and find balance. So thank you. (laughs) 
Well, I'm super grateful for you for being here as well. Is there anything else that you want to bring up about self-care or any you know, fun happenings or events you want to speak out into the world? You know, just to plug my business a little bit, you know, we do very intentionally create a beautiful safe space, a beautiful container for people to come in and relax and release and let go. And we set the intention for that space for you to connect deeper, deeper with yourself and and gain a better understanding of yourself and and your own self-care needs. So if you need some support and you need a quiet space and safe, non-sexual touch can be so healing. I have been a client, uh, you know, in your in your safe and beautiful, intentionally set space. And it is of great value. You know, I, I use it as one of my self-care tools to be able to just go in, tune into myself, kind of check out from the busies. And the energy and the space that you've created is really beautiful and and conducive to that, you know, just being present with the self and being aligned with relaxation and openness to receive. And the energy work that you do with people as well as, you know, the aesthetic work like combines together in a way that I think is of great value. So you know, I always joke and tell people to go get their face rubbed by you because it is a <laughs> gift that I am so grateful for. And I, I really think that you have a, a special, special gift when it comes to combining the two together in a beautiful way. Oh. So your website is emergeskinandsoul.com mm-hmm. and people can go there and make all the appointments and and get their their self-care needs met. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm so grateful for you too. And and I really enjoy holding space and caring for people like you that I know are in service, constant service to others. So to give you that safe space to connect with yourself and, you know, see you indulging in safe self-care, it's, it's really beautiful to see. And, you know, we love to do that, you know, for everybody. So, you know, if you just need a, a quiet, safe space with, you know, beautiful touch, massage and facials and, and energy work and these things, then, you know, we, we'd love to hold that space for you. Well, we are grateful that you do. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And so let's all tune out to this segment and just allow ourselves a little self-love. May we all be well. May we be blessed. May we find peace. And may we feel whole. Production of the Be Your Soul podcast is made possible in part by Emerge Skin and Soul, located at 2002 North Elm Street in Greensboro, North Carolina. Emerge Skin and Soul is so much more than just skin care because you are so much more than just your skin. Emerge believes in offering a skin to soul experience, working hand in hand with you to achieve your skin care and self care goals from the inside out. Offering massage, Reiki, and customized skincare plans, coupled with holistic modalities that bring skin, heart, and whole body into balance and harmony. Visit EmergeSkinAndSoul.com today to learn more and to book your appointment. Now for That's What Sky Says, the part of our podcast where Sky shares tools and tips to help you use today's topic of self-care in your daily life. In this segment, I offer tools and guidance that I have found helpful in my practice, and maybe you will too. Today, we are going to work on self-care and the idea that self does not mean selfish. We often are taught an unhealthy, humble way of being that takes away confidence, deservingness, and the feeling that we can take up space. You are amazing. Have you heard that today, this week, this month, this year? Have you heard it and been unable to believe it over the voice inside your head known as the critic who tries to convince you otherwise? Sometimes what happens is we hear these things and then the sound of the celebration of self is hard to process. Our critic takes over and we disbelieve, 
discount and disapprove the positive impact a compliment may make on our soul. We hear the words, but the impression ricochets into something else. What we hear and what we believe become two different things. Instead of allowing the truth of what is said to resonate within us, we deflect it into our inner conflicts and ego critic. What would happen if we just allow, allow you are amazing to come home to roost in your psyche because you are. Today, we're going to work on reinforcing a positive self-image. When we work in a healthy, humble way, we can say, I earned this space. I earned this energy. I earned this confidence. I can speak and receive my worth without shame. This isn't saying I'm best or better or more than the next. It's just an appreciation for all that we are right now without judgment. To do this exercise, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil or pen, and a timer or clock. Any kind of paper will do, but if you have paper and pen you really love, that's even better. You also can use a page of your journal. Set a timer for 10 minutes or note the time on your watch, phone, or clock. Write your name across the top of the paper. Then take 10 whole minutes to write everything positive and good you can think of about yourself. Include special attributes, talents, achievements intuitive reflections, and spiritual aha moments that you put to work. You can use a single word or sentences, whichever you prefer. You can write the same things over and over if you want to emphasize them. If you feel called, you can pause the podcast right now and take these 10 minutes of self-care in this moment. Or you can wait till we get to the end of the podcast and do it when we're finished. Either way, I'll be right here, ready and waiting. This exercise will likely feel difficult and may take some practice. Don't stress or worry if you sit there looking at your paper, struggling to fill it up. Practice it often until your awesomeness blossoms onto the paper with ease. If this exercise speaks to you, you can find it and much more in my Understanding Energy in Action course available on our website, www.beyoursoul.org. Thank you for meeting me here today in this moment of self-care and self-love. I feel honored and blessed to be able to share this space with you and hope to continue. May you be well. May you feel blessed. May you find peace. And may you be whole. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Be Your Soul podcast. We hope you'll like, follow, and share your thoughts on your podcast platform and spread the word about our new podcast with your family and friends. This podcast is published on the second and fourth Fridays of each month, but you can stay connected with Sky in between episodes. Visit Be Your Soul Sky if you're on Facebook. It's Be Your Soul Podcast on Instagram. And there's more information at our website, beyoursoul.org. This podcast is produced at Muddy Creek Studios.